we are here today with Rotarian Akram Ayub. He is somebody that I've known to be a genuine and genuine gentleman and a true Rotarian in his heart. He has served Rotary for 25 years and this podcast is to celebrate the 25 years of Rotary, of membership in Rotary for Akram. I'll give you a little bit of an introduction about, about him and where he comes from and his, a little bit about his journey to where he is now so that we get more context about who we have with us. Rotarian Akram Ayub has been a Rotarian for 25 years. He started his Rotary journey back in the US yes. and he is born and raised in Jordan and he completed his education in the US and spent 25 years there. And at the age of 31, you had the opportunity to come into Rotary and we'll talk more about how that started. And um, he's gone for medical trips, medical missions to Peru with other Rotarians from around the world. And his Rotary career has, is, is spanning across two different continents in the US and in two different clubs in the US and now in Rotary Club of Jumeirah, where he's yes. serving currently. He lives in Abu Dhabi with his family, with his wife and three children. Yes. They're all grown up, they're around the world now. And uh, a true family man, a man of service. And in his career, in his corporate career, he currently works at General Electric as yes. an engineer in the power generation department. And um, he's doing fantastically well for himself. He's worked in the oil and gas industry and the power generation industry across companies such as Rolls-Royce, Sizzler, now currently General Electric, Emerson Electric is where we started. So a lot of depth, a lot of experience, a very senior uh, man in the industry and a very senior Rotarian here with us. So yeah. with that being said, I really want to welcome you to the Rotary in Action podcast. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you very much. And, and to say also, uh, one of my first uh, mentor and uh, 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 manager was uh, was a Rotarian as well. He was well distinguished uh, engineer at the level of United States, if not globally. He was one of the few living uh, Manhattan Project engineers, which is was the elite engineers that was assembled around World War II to uh, uh, to come with ideas to end the, the World War II war. And many of the things that I learned, I still practice today. Uh, came came from him. He's a true leader. That uh, his name is J. Hilbert Anderson, and he was an engineer uh, when I met him. Uh, he was 85 years old, He's still uh, at top of his career. And uh, later on, I, I mean, I, I didn't know at the time uh, about Rotary, but uh, you know, he was a uh, Rotarian. So that was my my first uh, manager, my mentor, actually, that true leader that I still hold high regards to him. I mean, he, he passed away, you know, about 15 years ago, but uh, that's where I start my career, actually. So you just told us that your Rotary journey started because your manager introduced Rotary to you back in the U.S. in your early days, days of your career. How relevant do you think it is today for somebody who's working in the corporate sector, to involve their corporate life, or rather merge their corporate life and the Rotary community. Where do you see the value in that? Because there are, uh, how many members are there in Rotary in the UAE? I think there are about 300. Mm -hmm. But I think that's a very small number compared to how big Rotary clubs are in different parts of the world. But the potential here is immense. How do you think we can get more people out there to know more about Rotary? and yeah. to find interest in being a part of this wonderful community. Yeah, I mean, uh, I was introduced to Rotary, uh, you know, when I was uh, 31 years old. I was living in the U.S. Uh, and I was holding my career. Um, you know, my family, I was a single at the time. My family, you know, my parents were in Jordan. Uh, so for me, as always, was I live, uh, at the time I was in the Baltimore, Maryland, uh, is how I can become part of the society. I mean, I've seen a lot of work that's done around festivals, around volunteer work, how I become. And to, to my luck, uh, I met uh, a gentleman at the time, uh, Harry Moses. Uh, he invited me to Rotary. Uh, I used to play racquetball with him, although he was much older than me at the time. So this is where I started, is, is mainly to become part of the society. 
uh, as well as to give back to the, to the neighborhood, the, the, the area that I was living in. And then I became Rotary member in, uh, in June uh, 1997 in uh, Ellicott City, Maryland, where uh, I became the first Rotarian. I was born in July 1997. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why, and I'm 25 years old now. So, yeah. um, so I want to ask you now, one, one thing that you mentioned that really I can relate to is how being a part of Rotary and joining the community opens up a whole new uh, world of possibilities for you now because for, for my example is I came to Dubai as an expatriate and I came by myself with my families in another country. But when I connected with the Rotary Club here, I, w I, I got the opportunity to shake hands with real leaders of businesses, real philanthropists, real people who are making a change in society and people who are doing work around the world. And Rotary just opened up such a world of possibilities for me and it's changed the way my life is moving forward. Every day I get to meet new Rotarians, even yeah. like yourself, this opportunity is given to me by this platform. Similarly, how has Rotary impacted your career and your personal life yeah. from that time, in th from, the, from the age of 31 to, from 1997 to where we are today, yeah. these 25 years. Can you describe how much Rotary has played a, ro a role in your personal yeah. and career life? The, the objective was to meet people. Uh, then you meet the members. As you say, most of them, uh, they are business owners, uh, um, well established in their organizations uh, and what I call the true leaders. I mean, um, they are not to prove themselves by their actions rather than by their title. I mean, they, so just socializing with them every, every week, um, sometimes you have a question about career and about uh, or something you wonder about. Um, so they were, they've seen it, they've done it before, and they're willing to share their experience uh, without any uh, intention for, uh, for their own benefits. I mean, just to benefit people, benefit the society. And that's also part of Rotary. I mean, when we go give back to society, is to give back to each other. So once you start, you start enriching yourself and it started again, you know, I was wondering how I make it every, every week, how I find the discipline. But then you look around, I mean, these are, some of them, they own very big businesses, but they show up every, every week and uh, they help the society with their own hand. Uh, so that builds your personality without feeling it, because, you know, you are who you associated with. Um, and truly, they keep you in check. I mean, the norm is to be humble. The norm is to be to help others. Uh, the norm to improve. Uh, I mean, to to lift each other and and to to improve the society. I mean, uh, from an advice or from just simple uh, kindness to others is uh, is what's uh, what what what's built in me and and Rotary. Like you said. The more you associate with people of, of high caliber and with a genuine interest to serve the society, over time, without you knowing, you get influenced to model them, to be like them. And over the years, you change as a person. And so you only come to know once you hit milestones such as 25 years, you look back and say, oh my God, uh, I'm really a different person then. Because, because of the people that have, have associated myself yeah. with. So it's really nice. I mean, one, one of the things, you know, I was introduced by Harry Moses. Harry Moses just, um, he was a retired uh, from the FAA and he was head of uh, Westinghouse in the radar system. So he was very established in his, in his career. And one of the first projects I was involved with was uh, sweeping the street. And uh, coming from Middle East, I mean, sweeping street is, uh, we look down at it. So, you know, I was helping them with sweeping street, I was wishing nobody would see me. But then I look around who was helping me with that. It's him. There was other people that were uh, executives in Merck, some business owner. Then you come to a realization who the hell I am. I mean, why I'm thinking that I am something entitled. Uh, and then you think, I mean, this is my neighborhood, this is my house, this is my, uh, you know, we should keep it clean. 
So that build the humility in yourself. If you don't have it, I mean, you can, uh, it was built that way. And uh, just once you get the ball rolling, I mean, um, uh, we were, uh, there was a lot of good examples like that. A lot of uh, uh, figures that were in, in the clubs that you can uh, learn lesson from. And uh, that's, again, you know, started about, you know, I want to socialize in club, but then it became, I asked a couple of questions, I did this association, and then I became uh, like the general members of, of Rotary Club. One thing that you said here is uh, the ego gets checked when you join a club such as this, because you will meet a Rotarian who seems like a very kind man and is speaking to everyone so kindly, but... In his corporate life, he might be a mega business owner with a thousand, two thousand employees. Mm. You'll never know who you meet here. But what, what characterizes them as real true leaders is their ability to not be proud of their achievements or whatnot, but really be humble enough to say hello to everybody. Do you think, uh, I want your perspective on, now that you're in a senior position, you've seen so many people across so many different walks of life in such a different span of time. The people who get ahead, are, do they have a certain quality of humility that you have seen as opposed to people who, you know, have so much pride in them that they don't uh, associate with subordinates, that are so, don't associate with people who are uh, of a lower rank than them in their corporate life? Do you see a difference there? And is there yeah, some kind of advice you can give us about that? Yeah, I've seen through, uh, through the Rotary, uh, true leaders. I mean, you see also in corporate uh, self-proclaimed leaders. And truly leadership gets examined when you are uh, tested. Um, a true leader, I mean, they are doers. I mean, they know how to figure it out. They know how to rally the troops. Uh, and uh, not necessarily they are in the front, but they could be uh, uh, in the back pushing as well. Uh, my second interaction was with a doctor named Connie Sparks in uh, Rotary York East in York, Pennsylvania. I mean, she was a truly a leader. And, uh, you know, and this is, we were in a mission in, uh, in South America, and uh, there was a lot of medical equipment that was shipped, but due to some corruption in certain country, those medical equipment, they were worth money. So they will hold them at customs. Um, and the way that she dealt with it, uh, the way that she thought of, out of the box, how she rallied. We were about 40 members. And some of them, they were head of hospitals. They were, uh, I mean, I was an engineer. I'm not, I mean, I'm not a doctor. Uh, but the way that she rallied all of us, uh, and that trip was documented by Fox, by Fox News, that she reached out to her network. She reached out to um, that force the custom in that country to release it the next day. Mm. Uh, you know, it's it's a problem that was, uh, it seems at the moment for me that, you know, there's no solution for it. You, uh, but, but then she was, you know, as a leader, she took uh, the problem, she figured out the solution and she delivered on it. That's a true leader for me. Join us as we explore life in Peru or La Vida in Peru. Bienvenido a Peru. Welcome to Peru. This is a land rich in culture, history, and natural resources, yet it's one of the poorest in the Western Hemisphere. Millions of its people are living in poverty, faced with malnutrition, constant threat of disease, and limited medical resources. We'll spend the next week in the country working with Rotary International and its team of volunteers and doctors as they attempt to improve the quality of life for as many people as they can treat. The capital city of Lima is home to eight million people. Nearly a quarter of the nation's population lives in this extremely dry setting. The mountainous village of Villa Maria is remote and isolated to basic health care needs. The focus of our particular mission here today in Peru is to relieve pain. Dr. Eric Johnson, a dentist from the York area, is leading a dental team on this trip. Its mission is simple, improve oral health. Achieving that goal will prove to be a bit more complicated. It's very dry here, it's very dusty here. 
um, it's, it's a real challenge. It is a much different setting than the one back home. Here, there are no x-rays, no fancy tools or gadgets. It is basic, antiquated dentistry, easily decades, if not more than a century behind the times. Dr. Johnson will rely heavily on his training and instincts as a dentist. So we have nothing to begin with. So we're gonna have to create a dental clinic here and go from that particular point. They cope with the anticipated problems. Using bottled water to sterilize the equipment because there's no running water, working by the light of flashlights because there's poor lighting, but they also encounter unexpected hurdles. We're an hour out of town on the top of a mountain and we have no needles. So I, I don't know, we have to think about that. There is a fear the supplies could be across town with an optical team led by Dr. Bob McLenathan of Lancaster County. Perfect. He is no stranger to these types of missions. In the past, he's been to Brazil, Micronesia, Guam, and his experience reminds him each mission is unique. We'll have some other issues with the language uh, because everyone here will be speaking Spanish. We do have translators, but that will probably delay our work just a little bit longer as the day goes on. No puedo ver el otro. You can't see. 46-year-old Teofilo Chacon Alva is among the dozens to stop by this health clinic in the Flores de Villa neighborhood. He is visibly in pain. His right eye, swollen and irritated. Ask him how long his eye's been red. His vision is blurry, the result of a bacterial infection. Dr. Amy Spots will give him a solution, an antibiotics, a small token with a potentially life-changing impact. You know, people will break a bone and they don't get it fixed and they're, they're crippled. They get an eye infection and they don't have, they don't go to a doctor and they end up going blind. It is perhaps this reason why it generates such an emotional response. The tears form as he says, thank you. He's very happy, very happy. It's a similar story for 87-year-old Victor Zuayos. He can't see out of his left eye, yet the solution is fairly simple. He needs glasses. Oh, he used to wear glasses, so he lost his glasses about a month ago. So he's, he's kind of lost without the glasses. He will be one of hundreds of patients on this trip to receive lenses from Rotary. There are children who fail in school because they don't have glasses. So, I mean, it, 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 there are, there are all, uh, elderly who are going blind, who can't see anything, and they're walking around. They can only leave their houses if someone's leading them. So, I mean, it has a major impact. The mission is producing results, but it's in its infancy. Soon, the team itself will be the one asking for assistance. The American Embassy should be able to, to do something to help us. It is ironic. On a mission to help people see, the team will encounter something they never saw coming. We have no more supplies with us. Uh, we have uh, no ability to go on and do the um, schedule that we have. This is a really good example because I've had, I've seen this firsthand as well. If you have a problem which you cannot solve from your own personal network, and if you know a Rotarian, I think it's just a, I think there's a brand, there's a name, there's a value to saying that you're a Rotarian because I feel like it's somebody that the whole society can count on to really untie and untie problems and open doors of opportunity, whether it's in the government, whether it's in corporate. I feel like Rotarians have earned the right through service to really open doors at many, yeah. many levels that the ordinary man cannot. And that's one of the privileges I think that comes with going out there and giving yourself to service. Yeah, and I, I heard you know also that. The, you know, because we are uh, serving society, we are kind, that we are soft. But truly, in that example, I mean, uh, the peer pressure among the 40 of us was severe. I mean, it was very tough. I mean, uh, but it drove you to the positive thing, you know, to be a doer rather than blaming each other. Uh, come to the solution rather than focusing on the problem, get stuck with the problem. And that, that lesson I learned from, uh, and this was 15 years ago, till today I look high to her, you know, I mean, but also, you know, she's a female doctor, uh, you know, and a mainly male society has nothing to do with it. Either you're a leader, disregard 
to anything else are uh, true leader is the doer. And uh, true leaders make everybody thinks in the group that they are the leaders. In the, and, and that example is uh, till today, I still, still talk about it. It's, it's like yesterday. Uh, and if she sees this podcast, I say pa- pass my regard to Dr. Khan Sparks. Yeah, I, I, I truly believe. So it's made such an impression in you that even throughout the years, you, you still look at her as somebody that is a true leader. Yeah. And I think that's very special. I, I was exposed to the world of people doing medical camps, uh, um, eye camps and dental camps in rural areas and going there and providing glasses, like you said, to 500,000 people doing cataract surgeries for the whole village. I only was exposed to all of this once I got to meet Rotarians. But uh, what I want to ask you is, what would be your encouragement for those who are of my age, who may not have the resources or have seen other people do this, but want and have a desire to serve the community? How do you think they can utilize the Rotary platform, utilize the connections that they have to maybe even go organize a, 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 what do you call it, a blood bank where we collect blood and, uh, you know, or even a dental camp. How do we organize this? How do we utilize the Rotary platform for this? So if it's too cumbersome for you or from this region to organize such things, is to find, you know, clubs that are planning for this because they take a lot of planning. It's not an easy, I mean, people think, you know, you just take equipment and go. It's, it's not an easy uh, exercise. Especially when you're going to another country. Another and country. This, yeah. uh, I mean, the same you face with corruption, you face with a lot of things. So, uh, so some clubs, they have more experience and uh, is to find those clubs and say, well, you know, we want to join forces with you. So my advice, I mean, uh, is to find such clubs that they do these missions. So, you know, we want to partner with you, uh, find certain members they want to go and coordinate to them and and be part of their, their mission. And once you learn, maybe you will start your own own mission. Okay. But it takes a lot of dedication uh, and time. I mean, uh, and this is what I told I tell all the Rotarians in in, uh, in UAE, I mean, we live, and thanks for the government of Uni- United Arab Emirates, I mean, we live in, in uh, a very comfortable uh, and blessed comfortable life, life that, that this mission put you back in check, that mm. there's people in need, there's people, uh, 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 they need our help. It's not that they are not happy, I mean, they might be happy, but they need our help uh, in, uh, in, in certain things because they lack it in their countries. So uh, one of the main benefits of Rotary that I have seen is how global this organization is. From my little experience, I started my Rotary journey back in Bangalore. It was only when I came to Dubai, I realized that there's a Rotary club here. And there's a Rotary club in Jordan. There's a Rotary club in uh, every other country. And I came here and this, my whole world changed because Rotary opened up a whole new world for me in Dubai. Similarly, I went for a Europe trip back in 2019 and I saw there's a Rotary club in Austria, in Germany, in Croatia, and in every other country I've seen a Rotary club there. Can you give me your experience of how, through your travels, you have seen Rotary clubs around the world and do you have any experiences where you have uh, taken advantage of the fact that there is a Rotary club, there is an extended family around the world? Yes, um, uh, as you say, I mean, there is almost, almost, not in every country, but uh, there's Rotary clubs uh, everywhere. And, uh, you know, through my current position and, and previous company, you know, we traveled, uh, traveled quite extensively in uh, the Americas, Europe, the Middle East, Africa. And uh, sometimes you travel alone. And sometimes you are in a, in, a, in a country that you never visit before. Um, and I find that, you know, you have to eat dinner or have a breakfast because Rotary can meet breakfast or lunch or dinner. But the most convenient, you know, being on business trip is uh, either breakfast or, or dinner. Is instead of eating alone, I mean, you find a close Rotary club. 
And the advantage from it, I mean, the feeling, and I visited probably over 40 clubs in, uh, in, uh, in my 25 years, it's like you are visiting uh, a distant family. I mean, uh, uh, I mean, you are, they're not looking at you strange or anything. But what you get, you get what's the vibe of that city. What's going on? Um, and that you cannot read it in a review or, or anything, or uh, because they, you know, they are telling you about their city. If it's a, if it's a Stockholm or London or, uh, or Aberdeen or uh, Rome or, um, and you get really what the locals are talking about, what's making them tick at the moment. So you have a better perspective. So if you're visiting customer at the time. You know, you, you have better perspective as mm. if you were living there in that mm. city. I traveled also in the States and the same thing, you know, I visited many clubs. Uh, and again, you know, it doesn't feel strange that you are meeting strange people, although you the first time you see them. But again, we have one common thing, uh, serving the society, serving uh, humankind. So uh, it's literally like visiting a distant uncle or something like that. I mean, we have it similar DNA, similar uh, things, and uh, and that's one of the great advantages. Uh, and I visited clubs that didn't. It was in German or it was in Swedish, so I didn't understand the word. But but they were so kind that I, you know, I could get immediate translation what they were talking about. Uh, so that's, you know, one of the advantages of, uh, you know, being a uh, member of Rotary, of Rotary International. That's amazing. What would be your advice to youngsters, my, people of my age, maybe even people of their early 30s? What would be, a, could you give them a reason to consider being a member of this organization? And can you shed some light on why you think it would be beneficial for a young man or a young lady to join this organization? I mean, although, you know, uh, culture, um, uh, through the, the different generation, and we, we change how we interact, how we um, um, socialize. But at the end of the day, I mean, there is a common, you know, we are who we associated with. I mean, although, you know, now currently there is Rotary Club, virtual clubs, but we are who we associated with. So if you want to be some of one of these leaders that, People look up to them. Uh, I'm not saying Rotary is the only one uh, channel for that, but but it is one of the clubs that I found that high concentration of real leaders, humble leaders that are willing to give the, some of their experiences and so forth. And that's one of the things, you know, in. The, of the main advantages that you have to be able to become a member of, of Rotary. Now, the other, you know, the, 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 the giving back to society, and so it comes with the territory. Mm. But the advantage is what's in it for me, is you become a better person. Excellent. Again, you can take the horse to the water, and but you cannot force it to drink. But typically, people who go for other uh, interests, they will find bo uh, Rotary is boring. And... Um, they will quit. But, but if you go with very good intentions to learn and to serve, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's one of the best bets. That's fantastic. That's a really nice answer. Yeah. Well, that's all the questions I have for you today, uh, Ritair and Akram. It's been a real pleasure for me and to learn from you and your deep, deep experience in Rotary and in your professional life. For me, it's, it's a real pleasure and it's a real blessing. So thank you so much for your time and spending it with me today. Thank you very much, David. This was a great pleasure from my, uh, from my side as well. Please continue to do the good work that you're doing in society and spread the message of Rotary because I do believe that my generation greatly, greatly benefit from having the mentorship of uh, senior Rotarians like yourself. Thank you very much. Thank All you right. so Thank much. You. Bye bye.